Quite often in astronomy, objects are literally named after what they look like. Examples of this include the Ring Nebula, the Bubble Nebula, the Patman Nebula, the Witch Head Nebula, and, well, the list goes on. The Summer Triangle is no exception to this either, it's literally a large triangle formed by three bright stars, and it appears overhead in the Northern Hemisphere during the summer months, hence the name the Summer Triangle. It can also be seen lower down in the sky for much of the rest of the year, as well as low down in the southern hemisphere during the winter months. The summer triangle is somewhat of an illusion, although the three stars appear similarly bright from our vantage point on Earth. The star Deneb is actually a vastly bigger and brighter star compared to both Altair and Vega. However, Deneb is much, much further away, meaning less of its light reaches us. Altair is the closest of the three stars at just 17 light years away. It measures twice the diameter of the Sun, and is 10 times brighter. Vega is not much further away at a distance of 25 light years. Vega measures approximately 3 times the diameter of our Sun, and is an impressive 52 times brighter. However, Deneb is on a totally different level. It's much, much, much further away at a distance of around 3000 light years. That's 120 times further away than Vega is. It measures a massive 200 times the diameter of our Sun, and a colossal 200,000 times brighter. The Milky Way swathes directly through the Summer Triangle. When we look at the Milky Way, we're actually looking at billions of unresolved stars and numerous star-forming regions known as nebulae, all within the plane of our own galaxy. These star-forming regions include emission nebulae like the North American and Pelican Nebulae, both of which can be found in the constellation Cygnus, just below the bright star Deneb. Both the North American and Pelican Nebulae actually belong to the same cloud of dust and gas 2,600 light years away. They only appear as separate nebulae due to the dark band of dust that intersects the two. These nebulae appear very faint, so in order to photograph the North American and Pelican Nebulae, we need a camera sensitive to hydrogen alpha, such as an astro-modified DSLR or a dedicated astronomy camera with a reasonably large sensor. With a crop-sized APS-C size sensor, commonly found on entry-level DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, the North American and Pelican Nebula can be framed using a 135mm to 200mm lens, or we can drill into the nebula with longer focal length optics, or by cropping the image if our resolution allows it. The North American and Pelican Nebula can be seen visually as a fuzzy patch of light in the sky. Best viewed under very dark skies, the nebula covers a large apparent area, therefore optics with a large field of view, such as binoculars or a wide field telescope are a good tool to use. Nebula filters can also be used under light polluted skies to suppress unwanted wavelengths of light and enhance views of the nebulae. Heading northwards in Cygnus, towards the centre of the Summer Triangle, we find the star Gamma Cygni, commonly known as Seda. The star appears to be surrounded by diffuse emission nebula, but as we discussed with the Summer Triangle itself, this is an illusion. Seda is situated 1800 light years away, and the nebula region that appears to be surrounding the star sits much, much further away at a distance of 4900 light years away. Just 2 degrees southwest of Seda at a distance of 5000 light years, we find the Crescent Nebulae. Another emission nebulae, this intriguing brain-like structure is being created as a result of stellar winds generated by a super-hot Wolf Riot star, HD 192163. The stellar winds are colliding and exciting the surrounding slower-moving gas, which itself was created by the star thousands of years earlier when the star was a red giant-type star. The entire Seda region, including the Crescent Nebula, can be framed with a 200mm lens, or the Crescent Nebula can be isolated as the main subject using a telescope with around 800 to 1000mm focal length. Alternatively, you can of course crop the image if you have enough resolution to do so. In order to see the Crescent Nebula with your own eyes, observing reports from astronomy forums suggest using a larger aperture telescope, such as a 10-inch Dobsonian, in conjunction with an O3 nebula filter. Good transparency of the atmosphere is also important. Still in Cygnus, but moving further to the west, we find Sharpless 101, also known as the Tulip Nebula. The Tulip Nebula is an H2 emission nebula situated 6,000 light years from Earth. As with the Crescent Nebula, the Tulip Nebula is nicely framed by a telescope with around 1000mm focal length. It might be that it's too challenging to observe the Tulip Nebula, except for maybe those with the largest telescopes and the darkest skies. 
I wasn't able to find any amateur observing reports for this object either, so maybe one to miss unless you like a real challenge. Moving further to the southwest into the constellation Full Pecula, we find NGC 6820, a small reflection there but close to the open cluster NGC 8623. Both the cluster and reflection nebula are themselves within a faint emission nebula, SH2-86. Thankfully, for ease of naming, all three of these are usually referred to just as NGC 6820, which doesn't seem so bad after all. The combination of bright young stars, reflection and emission nebulae, along with the impressive columns of dark dust and gas called Bok globules, make this a very interesting object to image. Being a small object, it's well framed with telescopes of around 1000 to 1200mm using an APS-C crop sensor. The open cluster can easily be spotted with smaller telescopes, although the surrounding nebulosity requires larger aperture telescopes plus a nebula filter such as a UHC or an O3 filter. There are brighter, more easily found objects in the Summer Triangle region as well, such as M57, the Ring Nebula, and that's a planetary nebula situated very close to the star Vega, or M27, the Dumbbell Nebula, which is situated a few degrees above the star Altair. Both quite bright, easily seen objects that can be detected with a, even a small telescope or a pair of binoculars. And because they're bright, they can be captured on uh, quite short exposure times, which makes them ideal for anyone who's starting out in astrophotography. I hope you enjoyed this video overview of some of the night sky targets in our summer skies, and the, in particular in the, the summer triangle. And thank you if you made it this far through the video. And as always, a big special thank you to my channel members and my Patreons. Thanks so much for supporting the channel. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see more, you know what to do.